All right, Admin of Code, day 22, starting right now. Three, two, one, go. Okay. This is war. So I have to simulate war. Okay, so um, Oh shoot, um... Do we always put the higher one first? Yeah, so higher one first. Um, I hope that's not the case. If we have to, if we have to deal with it, then that's gonna be unfortunate. 
Um, so if C1 is less than C2, then this DP2R plus DP1 equals DP1R equals C2 and C1. Second player lost, therefore first player gets the card. Card one, card two. Oh, wait. That might have worked. That was pretty good. This whole thing should be in bold. Um, So we do this. Same thing.
Wait, are they finished? Okay, good. That was another ton of terrible, terrible time. Okay, so previous round in this game what is what is the answer what is the winning player's score Have the original deck using the same rules as regular combat. Oh shoot, this is going to be super slow. Hold on.
Okay. Four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. So clearly I don't actually understand what it's supposed to return. Okay, in it for the long haul. Um, I see. Okay, um, that looks good.
that's kind of annoying. Okay, um, that makes sense. Um... Player one doesn't always win, right? When does player two win? It's still this condition. And then
Oh dear. Fudge. Oh, shoot. What else? Okay, so... Is that really it? Wait. That's unfortunate. How did you win? Gosh darn it. That's impressive. I have to still wait one minute fifty five. 
Yeah, well, so I debugged that I had the wrong conditional here. So, you know, we're kind of on even ground. Um, gosh darn it. <sighs> I'm so triggered. I'm literally so triggered. Oh, congrats. Um, congrats, Panda. Congratulations on your um, getting getting approved for mines. That is imp that is great. That's really great. Um, what do you think? Do you think you're going to come? 53 seconds? Oh, my gosh. Oh, John Taylor also uh, it looks like he's got second. So, yeah, this is another... Con Let's see, what did Easton get? got third and then I probably did oh, wait no this is this is th day 13 wrong day fourth I got wait I got third how's that possible I did a thing 22 seconds come on come on Oh, yes. I needed that. I needed that. Yes. All right. I'm rooting for literally everyone else to solve before Easton at this point. <laughs> um, so I'm rooting for Colin for once. I mean, I, I always root for everyone. Yeah, I'm really kind of pissed at myself. <laughs> McFan is like, don't root for Colin. I just want anybody to beat Easton. So unfortunately, McPanda, I am rooting for Colin. So that actually went pretty okay. And I actually liked this one. Um, I guess the only, like the, the real blemish that I have was just the fact that I still managed to, to not, to be slow on, on, on part, um, on part one. Um, I mean, I don't know what I could have done better, honestly. It was fine. It is what it is. I mean, it's top 1,000 again. That's that's a nice to be back in, the, in that. In that, um, for sure. It just took me too long to understand what, like... I mean, I understood it was war. I should have just started implementing it. Um... Let me see. So, uh, Joshua, welcome into chat. Um, 439573. Yeah, it took me a bit too long on part two, so that was slightly disappointing. Okay, what's going on? Did I actually break something? Part. Oh. <laughs> no, I just, I just can't read. Yeah, so part part um part one went well. Like it's pretty obvious that it's war. Yeah, yeah. I spent the time to just read this entire all of this prose like twice, um, and that really, uh, really helped me at least get that part. I just had to debug other stupid stuff like, um, you know, yeah. What what other stupid stuff did I do? Well, one thing that's really strange is that I guess you always put the winner's card on the on the in above the one that you the the loser's card. Um, I thought you had to flip it, and so I actually yeah. I mean, I, I wasted a good two minutes just waiting for the um, uh, for the um, what's it called in, uh, exponential back off to, to expire, which that was really annoying. But I did see that 
I was pretty proud of myself for implementing that correctly the first time. That would have really sucked to have to debug. Um, my, my big problem was that I did, th I set this to false here and then I set it to, I should have just gone with the two if statements here. That would have been a much better idea. Um, but I, I, I did w equals two when p wins equals false, which obviously isn't gonna catch when p1 wins. So that was, that cost me a good two minutes. Yeah, I thought that was, I, I don't know. I feel like today was a lot nicer than yesterday, even though it was a quick problem again. Um, it was at least interesting. You know, the war simulation, kind of fun. You know, I was a bit slow, but that's standard. Yeah, I think I think that went okay. P1 was, it, yeah, it was kind of a bit of a, a fast switch. I do agree, but I don't know. I, I, I find simulations to be at least somewhat more interesting than, than, you know, whatever, whatever we had to do. Input parsing effectively, <laughs> set, set, set math and uh, set theory. That really sucks for me. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> the problem was that I I thought, oh, wait, you can just compute the full deck? That's not how it works. Like each deck before they started? Like, okay, ex one thing that I was confused about with part two was that at the very end of it, it says that after the game, the winning the winning player score calculated from the cards they have in their original deck, using the same rules as regular combat. This sentence doesn't make any sense. It it makes it seem like you don't actually have to t to like simulate. You can just take the set, take the list, and then just compute the two <laughs> the two ones. And I actually tried that. Obviously, it didn't work. Um. Okay, that sentence is, is poorly worded, to say the least. I would say that cost me, cost me a place for sure. Day, so day 2019, day 22, where, where is this? Ah, space cards. I maybe I'll maybe I'll look at this. Maybe I'll look at this afterwards. I don't have work tomorrow, so so that's you know might might have to do that. Yeah, definitely, definitely, really hurt on that one. Okay, I, I my my opinion of this question is it, it's it's okay. Okay, um, let's. Let's see here. I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just clean up some code. I wish that Python had like a way to make these like immutable. You know, basically I need Rust, but um, okay. So um, how could I have done this better? Honestly, this is fine. It works. So the other thing that I was confused about um, is what hap What you're supposed to do when, maybe it was in, in instructions for part one. Did you guys see where it described the order in which you were supposed to put? Yeah, player one has a higher card, so both player such that nine is above five. But that's not actually what you do on part two. On part two, if you do that, you get it wrong. You, you just put it in whoever won puts it under. And I didn't see anything about that changing. Yeah, this was this was a kind of unfortunate to be perfectly honest. Well, it's not but the thing is it says player one has a higher card so like the inference is that because the um the card is higher, then that's the one that you move to the bottom. Which is really, yeah. I mean, I guess I, I mean, at some point I could have just like skipped this entire prose text here, 
But I did look, I mean, I, I literally didn't know what to do. So I read this. I didn't know how to handle whose card goes. And so I read this and then it screwed me for part two. Like I definitely submitted one wrong. Anyway, um, more cleanup. What happened here? Anything? This is pretty gross. I'm so glad we didn't have to handle equal things. Hey, JB31842, welcome into chat. Um, not really winner. I solved it, at least. You know, it, it, it was fine. I'm just kind of waiting for, for the rest of the leaderboard, my private leaderboard here to, to fill up. Oh, thank goodness, Jack solved. Yes, thank you. Darn it. Yeah, I, I, I'm just too dumb. I'm just too dumb for this. That was kind of embarrassing. I definitely lost at least two minutes due to the, to the timeout. Yeah, so the, so Joshua, the thing is, like, the Q libraries in Python are literally, I think, the weakest points of Python. You know, let me, like, I, I never, I never like using these. Cause it's not like a primitive, you know, it's like, you had to like make the object thing and then you got to like use the like special, like get and put like, sure it works. Maybe I should convert to that. It would probably make the code cleaner, I guess. It's just really kind of annoying. Um, yeah, so I'm using nested tuples as well for, for my state duplicate state detection. It was, it worked. It was fine. <laughs> okay. Let's just go ahead and talk through the, the problem. Um, do the explanation part. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to make, you know, for, for problems that I don't spend six hours solving, like, um, I'm trying to, you know, have these be somewhat educational because at this point, it's not like I'm like going to be winning the leaderboard. So it's not like you're going to be looking at looking at my stream for anything interesting on that front. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that tu tuples being hashable today was like the one, like the number one clutch thing from Python. That was like really, really nice. Okay, um, I'm going to talk through my solution. I'm going to talk through it. And then we're gonna probably optimize this. It really needs some. It needs some love. It needs some real love here, because um, this is inefficient. This is inefficient. Um, pretty much everything here is inefficient. So, yeah. Here we go. So, all this game, all this problem is, is you gotta simulate war. Um, luckily, there are never ties. And I don't know how he contrived the input such that that's the case, but he did. Um, and basically, it's exactly how you expect. Whoever wins puts the cards at the bottom of their stack. So that's what's happening here in round one. Uh, they, they, they flip nine and five. Nine wins, therefore player one wins the round. And he puts his card on to the bottom of his deck first and then puts five on after. Then it's 2-8, player 2 wins, the same thing happens, but 8-2 goes to the bottom of, of his, his stack. The important thing to note is that the way to determine whose card goes first who, is that it's whoever won, not whoever's highest, because, again, like I said, that cost me another submission. That's all it is. It's actually a fairly simple problem for part 1. And the way that I'm doing it is first by copying the lists just to make sure that I don't mutate them. And then in this function, I just mutate to my heart's content. First, we have to determine, um, first we have to loop until there's one person has one, which means they have the, all the cards. At which point um, we go down here and the answer is basically you're supposed to to take the bottom of the of the list, multiply it by one. So whatever is like here, right? You multiply that by one, you multiply this by two, you multiply this by three, and you add them all together. That's what this is doing here. One, this is um, calculating everything once we've once we've uh, uh, once we've figured out who who's one. 
So I actually kind of slightly cheesed this because I just looked at my output and saw who had won the game. I really need two of these. Um, if, if, this need, if this is more general. But I finally did some slight optimization to give me a couple seconds back on, on part one. Are associated with the cards at the bottom of the stack. Okay, so I can do an optimization here to, or at least a simplification here. It's guaranteed that one of these is going to be zero, so just adding them together is totally fine, and then we can just do the for loop over the reversed deck. Um, that's pretty good. Um, so what happens in this loop? Um, basically pull off the front of the, the top of each deck. I'm abusing Python's ability to to do uh, expansion into this this um into a list like this, so this is just destructuring the list, getting the head and then the tail effectively. This is where you know having Haskell or pattern matching would be nice. Yeah, like I said, I, I tend to not try and not use Q as much as possible because it's just so darn confusing in my opinion um in python and and you end up i i find that i end up having to convert a ton anyway um anyway um here determine who has won and add their and set their decks accordingly Okay, um, the nice thing, like I said, we don't ever have to deal with it this, that they're the same. Oh, I bet I... There's there's probably just never... Oh yeah, they just must be unique. Um, that's good. The decks are unique. So it's not like a standard card deck where you can have ties. That would make this really interesting. And probably make it really hard to contrive this problem. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, before we move on, I just want to like mention the input parsing. Input parsing is pretty basic. Um, it's another one of those kind of state machine-y type things. Um, maybe doing this in for two for loops would have been a little bit cleaner, but... Um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and yeah, I think this is, this is about it. Okay, and I think I can do the same here. Just do that, I guess. So, part two is a little bit different. The idea is that if you have a situation where um, there's enough cards to do a sub game, and a sub game is is basically, um, well, here's an example of when we can have a sub game. So it requires that you take the next. So if you have two, if you flip two numbers and you have that number of cards in the rest of your stack, at least that number in the rest of your stack, then you play a sub game. So here, for example, we flip four and three, and then because there's enough to play a sub game, 
there's four in this list. There's more than three in this list, but we only take the top three. Um, then we play a sub game. So game two, or you know, a sub game that, to determine the winner of this round um, is we play this game, right? Nine, eight, five, two, and then ten, one, seven. No, we get rid of the six. So that's important to remember. And then we just play it normally. Eventually, we might get to another sub game, but um, this one doesn't have a a a winner. Um, I think it's a win by who knows. Player two wins, um, which means that uh, that player two is going to get these numbers. So that's what this is doing. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So Easton's uh Easton was trying to bomber peak tonight. Clearly it worked last night. <laughs> Honestly, I would say I, that actually makes sense. Like this one this yesterday's problem was actually a pretty good bomber peak problem. I got to say like it was one of one of those where you just kind of need to ha be kind of reckless. Let's see, um, did that, let's see, uh, 113, 170, so I gained four. That's not, that's not enough. Still 10 back, but if I, if I do it, if I, you know, it's, it's within reach, it's within reach. That's the, that's a goal. More importantly though, I, I didn't lose any ground to Colin. So the, the top of our leaderboard is actually very, very competitive. I, I'm, I gotta give it to everyone. Everyone's so smart. Okay, um, where was I? Back to part two. So the idea is literally just that, right? It's this, the, the new rule is this sub rules thing. And the condition for having a sub, sub game, sorry, sub game, not sub rules. The, the condition for having a sub game is if you can have it, if you do have enough cards to have one. So like here, you can't have a sub game because there's not six cards here. So you don't have a sub game. Um, and then, so, how we should decide this round. If there are enough cards to play a sub round then sub game then call this function recursive and then otherwise we just determine it like normal so yeah that's the the key wait Why is it fast now? What I what I remove? Did you guys see what I did? I have no idea, but it's fast now. How's part two fast again? Oh well, um, we'll go back and look at that later. Um, again, the same condition for for handling. Oh. Oh, the one other thing for part two that is important is that if we've basically you can have infinite games, if you see the same set of cards for both player one and player two, the same decks, then you just, it ends. So for a game, like if you, um, I think there's an example in here somewhere. I don't know. Basically, if you if you see the same set of things in a deck, then you give up, and player one wins. So that's what this is handling here. Um, I used tuples for for this, and I actually think that it was a good idea to use tuples here. So kind of to Joshua's uh, comment about 
about using queues. On this one, I think that using tuples was a good thing because that allowed me to hash and use them in the set without having to like convert them to strings or something like that. Um, okay, so what's going on here? Um, first, the first rule to add is if the state has been seen before. Okay, and then here, um, this is the exact same as above. Um, and then decide, I can't even spell anymore. Yeah, using a queue for part two would not, I have worked probably. I mean, so you can actually, let's look at the queue library. There's a way, but I think it's like, Oh, then nope looks like there's no way to do it besides draining the queue and, and re re adding it yeah no using tuples for this is absolutely essential or using something that isn't a queue um, okay that's pretty good um, this is the recursive call Um, who wins the sub game? Winner. Do that. And then what else is there here? Some inefficient tuple usage, but who cares? <laughs> um, Unfortunately, the thing about uh, destructuring a tuple is it doesn't give you tuples, which is really dumb. Like, that's so annoying. Oh, well. Um, it works. It works. Uh, everything else is the same with part two as part one, besides this recursive call and this, this loop detection. That's it. Um, and then I, I think it's, it's pretty good. It's it works. It's not too bad. Um, otherwise, yeah. I, Joshua. Um, so Joshua's mentioning in the chat that he's trying to optimize, and um, he he broke he broke it such that it works on the sample, but not the actual input. Um, yeah. So Joshua, one of the things that I've do I've been doing is these regression tests, and I totally forgot to do it, but. Um, for, for this already. Oh, I might have broken it. Shoot. Oh, I managed to break it. Gosh darn it. What'd I do? So I've done the exact same thing as you. What did I even change? Oh, this is, this is wrong. <laughs> Lol. Um, there we go. Yeah, so, so I have this regression test, just assertion to make sure that I don't screw it up. It really does, it really does help me, um, especially when, when I'm refactoring, if I remember to do that. And yeah, I would agree that it, sample input wasn't great today. It didn't really, it didn't really cover the cases that needed to be covered. Okay, so that's the explanation of part two. I, I think um, next is refactor. Nah. I'm really not in the mood for refactoring this. This is good enough. I think we're just gonna, we're gonna, I think we're gonna call it here. Yeah, let's just call it here. Thank you all for watching. If you're on YouTube, give it a like and subscribe and come over and follow me on Twitch where you'll get notifications of when I go live. And I will be going live again tomorrow at around 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time to, uh, to do the stream.